Hey guys, how's it going? In this video we're going to look at electromagnetic radiation, so let's get started. Now we've already seen in the section on fields that magnetism and electricity are mutually related since a changing magnetic field is able to generate an electric field and a changing electric field is able to generate a magnetic field. It then says that the unification of the two was achieved by James Clerk Maxwell, a Scottish mathematical physicist, and by unification all we mean is the combination of magnetism and electricity into this thing that we call electromagnetism. Maxwell predicted that electric and magnetic fields would sustain themselves free from charges and currents if they took the form of an electromagnetic wave, and he came up with four equations called Maxwell's equations which describe these waves. This means that electromagnetic radiation exhibits wave properties as it transfers energy through space. It then goes on to say that the electromagnetic wave is formed when an electric field combines with a magnetic field. The field components oscillate in phase, perpendicular to each other and to the direction of travel of the wave, and therefore the energy propagation as shown below. So without actually drawing the wave, here are the components of the vectors. So let's say we've got the electric field direction up the way and the magnetic field direction out this way here, and these two are perpendicular to each other at right angles, but then these are also both perpendicular to the direction of travel of the wave which moves to the right in this case. And adding in the picture of the wave this time, this is what you would see. So here we have the electric field component going up and down, and then we also have the magnetic field component coming towards us and then away from us, and towards us and then away from us. And then we have the direction of travel of the wave or energy propagation, which moves perpendicular to both of these things. I'm just going to show you a quick simulation to help you visualize this. So here we have a wave with the electric field strength moving in the y-axis, the magnetic field strength moving in the z-axis, and then the direction of wave propagation moving along the x-axis there. And if I click play here, you'll see that both the electric field and magnetic field strength oscillate in phase. So notice that both reach their maxima at the same time. So at this point, where there's a maxima, both reach their maxima at the same time, but that means that both also meet their minima at the same time, so the bits where there's zero oscillation or zero amplitude. And we should also be able to see that the electric field in orange and the magnetic field in green are both perpendicular to each other, and these are also perpendicular to the direction of wave travel. Going back to the notes now, it can be shown that Maxwell's equations result in a relationship for the speed of light c written in terms of two constants, and this gives us an equation which you'll get on the relationship sheet in the exam, which says c equals 1 over the square root of epsilon naught times mu naught, where c is the speed of light measured in meters per second, epsilon naught is a constant called the permittivity of free space, which you get on the data sheet in the exam, that's 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter, and mu naught is a constant called the permeability of free space, and again this is given on the data sheet in the exam, so that's 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 henrys per meter. Lastly, it says to note that this means that all electromagnetic waves, regardless of frequency or wavelength, travel at a constant speed in a vacuum. You saw this at nat 5 level. So the fact that the speed of light c is found using two constant values, that means that the speed of light itself must be a constant value. And remember from special relativity at higher level, one of Einstein's postulates said that the speed of light in a vacuum is the same for all observers, and that is this value at 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.